You're probably getting tired of hearing me say this, but Core Image is yet another super fast and super powerful framework from Apple. It does only one thing, which is to apply filters to images that manipulate them in various ways. One downside to Core Image is that it's not very guessable, so you need to know what you're doing, otherwise you'll waste a lot of time. It's also not able to rely on large parts of Swift's type safety, so you need to be careful when using it, because the compiler won't help you as much as you're used to. To get started in viewcontrol.swift, I'm going to go ahead and add an import line for core image to bring in the whole core image framework. We need to add two more properties to our class, so we'll put these two underneath the var current image property line here. We'll say var context is a CI context, implicitly unwrapped, and var current filter is a CI filter, implicitly unwrapped. So these two new properties here. This first one is a core image context, which is a core image component that handles rendering. We'll create it once and use it throughout our app with its property, because creating a context is computationally expensive, so you don't want to keep on doing it. The second one, this is a core image filter, and will store whatever filter the user has activated. This filter will be given various input settings before we ask it to output a result for us to show in the image view. We want to create both of these in viewed load, so I'll put both of these before the end of the method. Just here, we'll say context is a new CI context to work inside. And current filter, I'll make a CI filter with the name string of CI sepia tone. That's an example filter that will apply a sepia tone effect to images. It's just for now, we'll let users change it soon enough. To begin with, we're going to let users drag the slider up and down to add varying amounts of sepia effect to the image they selected. To do that, we need to set our current image property, this thing here, as the input image for our current filter, core image filter. We're then going to call a method, as yet unwritten, called apply processing, which will do the actual core image manipulation. So we'll scroll down and find did finish picking media with info. Then we'll say let begin image equals CI image with the image parameter, there we go, being our current image. And then current filter dot set value that begin image for the key KCI input image key, like that. And finally call apply processing. Now this line here will cause an error because we have not written that method just yet, but we'll get there soon enough. The CI image type is, for the sake of this project at least, just the core image equivalent of UI image. Behind the scenes, it's more complex than that. It doesn't really store image data, it's more like a recipe, telling how an image should be transformed with various filters applied to it. Anyway, what matters is, as you can see, we can create a CI image from a UI image. And we send the result of that into our core image filter using the set value call here, passing in the parameter KCI input image key. There are a lot of core image key concepts like this one, but as you can see, this one at least is fairly self explanatory. It is the input image. As you can see, after those two lines of code, we call apply processing, and that doesn't work it's not written yet. But before we write that, we're also going to call apply processing inside the intensity change method. That's when it's called we drag our slider around. So we'll write in there as well, apply processing. And that will still fail. We've still not written that call just yet. But with those changes, apply processing is called as soon as the image is first imported, then whenever the slider is moved. So now it's time to write the initial version of apply processing. So we'll put this for the end of our class. We'll say func apply processing. We're going to write current filter dot set value intensity dot value for key kci input intensity key another core image key so i'll pass in the value of our slider as the intensity for the current filter we then want to read out that finished rendered image as a ui image so we can show it on our screen this takes uh, an extra step here because you can't convert a ci image into a UI image directly, at least not easily. It's got to go through a third type called CG image from Core Graphics. 
So core image goes to core graphics, core graphics goes to UI image. Uh, and it's this way it applies the filter correctly, gives us a finished rendered image. So we'll write code like this. If let CG image equals context dot create CG image, uh, we're gonna pass in for the CI image, our current filter dot output image. This is in, uh, optional, so I'll do a force unwrap just here to get it out from there from sure. And from the size, this is the from parameter, which bit to read, we'll write, current filter dot output image force unwrap dot extent so the size of the output image if that works we'll write let processed image be equal to ui image with the cg image being our cg image and then image view dot image be equal to our processed image like that so there's lots of code in here only four lines. This thing here, again, reads in the value of our slider and uses that as the intensity for our filter. This next line is where the work actually happens. This bit here. We create a CG image from our core image filter. We specify which part of the image we want to render, but just using current filter dot output image dot extent just means read the whole image. Now, until this method's called, no actual processing is done. This is one of the magic things about core image. Those CI images are really just recipes describing filter this, filter that, filter something else, value, 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 value. No actual work's done until you finally say, create me a CG image, please. So it really delays the work until it's absolutely necessary. If we can read a CG image correctly, we then convert that to be a UI image and put that inside our image view. Now being well, if I press command R now, it should build and run and we can try pulling an image in from UI image picker controller and see how it looks. So I'll press plus, choose uh, this one here, uh, choose this nice sort of you know, waterfall picture, then press choose, boom, there we go. And if I drag this slider down the way, you'll see it becomes more natural colors, and I drag it up the way, it becomes more and more sepia toned, like an old sort of uh, 19th century photo almost like that. That's the intensity slider working exactly as hoped. Now although that code works, I do want to look more carefully at these uh, force unwraps here and here. They aren't really necessary. Now in theory, this is never going to crash, it will always work. But in practice, of course, theory and practice are very different things. So we can write some simple code to read that output image more safely and remove those force unwraps completely. It's much it makes much nicer code, I think. So up here, so after the method, we'll say uh, guard let output image be equal to current filter dot output image, else return. So if we couldn't read the output image, just bail out immediately. Don't do any further work. Now you can use that instead of current filter output image force unwrap. And again here, just to make sure we definitely have a real extent being passed in, because this way output image is definitely going to be there always. There's no risk of a crash in the future for unknown situations. Now adding a sepia effect isn't very interesting. And I wanna help you explore some of the other options presented by core image. So we're gonna make the change filter button work. It's gonna show a UI alert controller with a selection of filters. And when the user selects one, it will update the image. So I'll scroll up here and find our change filter method. Inside they'll make a new alert controller. We'll say let AC equals a UI alert controller with a title being choose filter. Message can be nil, that'll be empty. Uh, preferred style, I'm going to say action sheet, like that. Then we're going to add a load of actions to this. We're going to say ac.add action, a UI alert action with the title being CI bump distortion. The style is going to be dot default. The handler is going to be set filter. Now, we haven't made set filter yet, so I'll throw an error for the time being, but the principle's okay for now. I'll then copy and paste that quite a few times. So we'll have one there, uh, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, and then finally a, a cancel button. So I'll have cancel 
style cancel handler nothing don't change then we'll go ahead and add different filters in here so we have ci bump distortion we'll add ci gaussian blur then uh, ci pixelate our old friend ci sepia tone then ci twirl distortion looks particularly good i think We'll have a CI Unsharp Mask and CI Vignette, plus, of course, a Cancel at the end. So that's seven different core image filters plus one Cancel button, but no new code. So, of course, we want to present that on the screen somewhere. So for that, we can say uh, present that alert controller animated true, like that. Now, that should work just fine for iPhone because if you see the, the code up here, uh, it'll create a look controller, add the actions, add a cancel, and then present it. Uh, but it won't work so well for iPad because we have an action sheet style, and that requires a popover presentation controller rectangle to be used so it knows where to present from. As you can see, uh, our sender is down as any, so anything can call this method. What we want to do really is say, call this thing from a UI button. And it still works, of course, um, change filter was a UI button in the first place. But now we have a way we can pin our alert controller, the action sheet, to a particular button on the screen. So before we present the alert controller, we can say if let popover controller equals AC dot popover presentation controller. So if it has a popover presentation controller, let's use it. We're going to say our popover controller dot source view is equal to sender. So use the sender, the button that was tapped, as the source for our popover presentation controller. So popover appears to come from our button. We can also say popover controller dot source rect. And source rect is used alongside the source view to say Here's the view come from, here's the rectangle around that, the width and the height and the X and Y relative to the source view to offset that arrow if you want to. So it knows what kind of space the view occupies and how to show the arrow around it. In this case, we can just write equals sender dot bounds. Just use the width and height and X and Y of zero and zero uh, for our button. And it'll use that nicely to present the alert from our button directly. To try that out, we've got to write a quick version of our set filter method. We'll make it do nothing at first. Uh, we'll say func set filter. Action was the UI alert action that was triggered. Uh, what I'm going to do is print out onto the command line uh, action.title force unwrap just for now so we can see it working in the app. So I'll press command R. We'll build and run that back in my iPhone simulator. And now when I press change filter, we should see all our options appearing here. Bump distortion, Gaussian blur, pixel 8, sepia tone, 12 distortion, unsharp mask, and vignette. But all being well, if I stop that, then select an iPad for my options here. I'll choose, say, the iPad Pro 6th generation. When I run that one back, we should see the uh, popover presentation controller working correctly. So the options appear from the change filter button directly, rather than sort of floating in the middle of the air or worse, having a crash. Okay, so there's the iPad, nice and big. I'll make it slightly smaller on the screen so we can see what we're doing. I'll press change filter, and boom, there we go. There's that thing appearing with the arrow pointing down right to the change filter button we're in the first place. It's a really, really nice way of working. Anyway, back to our code again. Uh, obviously, we want set filter to do more than just print out the action title. Uh, what we're going to say is, First, make sure we have a valid image before we continue. So we'll say uh, guard current image is not equal to nil, else return. So we know for sure we have an image chosen by the user from importing the photo library. Uh, we'll then create a new CI filter from the action title that was passed in. So we'll write guard let action title equals action dot title, else return. And current filter is equal to a CI filter with the name of that action title. 
Next, make a new beginning image from our current image property. We'll write let begin image be equal to a CI image with the image of our current image. And use that for the begin image in our current filter. So we'll write begin image there for key KCI input image key. Boom. And finally, we can call apply processing. So apply that processing, that new filter, to the image they had selected previously. But before we run the code just yet, our current code has a problem in it. And it happens where we modify the KCI input intensity key, uh, which is uh, down here. Now that sets the intensity of the current filter. But the problem is that not all filters have an intensity setting. So if we try using the CI bump distortion filter, the app will crash because it doesn't know what to do with the setting for the intensity. It has no idea what that means. Now all the filters and the keys they use are described fully in Apple's documentation. But for this project, we're going to take a shortcut. There are four input keys we're going to manipulate across seven different filters. Sometimes the keys mean different things, and sometimes the keys don't exist. So we're going to apply only the keys that do exist with some cunning code. Each filter in core image has an input keys property that returns an array of the keys it can support. We're going to use this in conjunction with the contains method to see if our input keys exist. If it does, we'll use it. Not all these keys expect the value between 0 and 1, so we'll sometimes multiply the slider's value to make the effect more pronounced. So we're going to modify our apply processing method to this. First we'll say let input keys equals current filter dot input keys. So read all the input keys out. And rather than having this one line here of doing the intensity, instead we're going to say this. We're going to say uh, if input keys dot contains KCI input intensity key, then current filter dot set value intensity dot value for key KCI input intensity key. Boom. So if we have intensity in our input keys, then use our slider for that. Next, we'll say uh, if input keys dot contains KCI input radius key. If we have one of those, we'll say current filter dot set value, and we'll do again intensity dot value. This time we're going to multiply it by 200, make it really, really strong on the screen. Remember our slider goes from 0 to 1, so by having 200 in there, it'll go between 0 and 200. Uh, and so we'll do for key, and this time again KCI input uh, radius key. Boom. Next we'll say if input keys dot contains, oops, dot contains uh, KCI input scale key. Then current filter dot uh, set value intensity dot value multiplied by 10. Make it 10 times as strong as normal for key KCI input scale key. Boom. And finally, uh, we'll do one more key. If input keys dot contains KCI input center key. Then we'll say current filter dot set value. This takes what's called a CI vector, a direction and, uh, and velocity in one direction. Uh, we'll say uh, CI vector. This has uh, an X and Y value. So we'll do our current image dot size dot width divided by two. So half the size of our, our image. And Y will say current image dot size dot height divided by two. And then for key, KCI input center key. So we're centering it on our image directly, the halfway the uh, left and top and bottom of our image. So center our, our effect on the center of our image. Uh, after that, uh, oops, there's a typo here, value with a lowercase a, my mistake, boom. After that, we carry on with the same code before. We had, uh, you know, guard let output image equals the output image from the current filter, put it through as UI image, and so forth. The main thing is that using this method, we check each of our four keys. 
input center key, input scale key, input radius key, and input intensity key. We check the support by the current filter, and if so, we provide a value by modifying something from our slider. Now obviously in, in a real app, you'd have maybe four different sliders, or three or two, depending on which, which uh, filter you chose. By using one slider, they all work together to produce different kinds of images in very interesting ways. So we run an app now, we should be able to see uh, various filters working. I'll switch back to the uh, iPhone, oops, iPhone XR simulator, uh, and run that back, and we'll give it a try. Now I should remind you, uh, you want to use a real device for this as possible because uh, the simulator is quite slow. Particularly things like Gaussian blur will run very, very slowly in the simulator, but lightning fast on devices, a thousand if not more times faster on devices. Uh, anyway, so I'll press plus here. Uh, I'll go and choose uh, this uh, waterfall picture again. Press choose. There's our sepia effect quite nicely. No sepia, maximum sepia. And then I'm going to try and apply a different filter. So I'll go ahead and choose a uh, CI twirl distortion. And when I drag that one out, all being well, let me see, kind of like a whirlpool in the middle, like that. Beautiful. Done totally in real time. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's super silky smooth on device as well. And let's try a vignette. I'll drag that one out. There we go. That fades the edges. Just gently around the edges. Uh, and we'll do one more. Let's do pixelate. Now, by default, it has no pixelation, so you'll see nothing at all. Um, but I drag it out a little bit, you'll sort of see it becoming more and more uh, grainy, as you see there. So the pixels get bigger and bigger and bigger. So obviously, you need some sort of minimum value that is not zero, because zero shows nothing at all. So a little bit is good enough. There we go. Fantastic.